for the two of you, just this once. Upon saying that, Mom handed us each 100 yen coins. That day was a cold winter day. At the Mountain Aquarium Souvenir area, the smell of construction lingered faintly in the air. There were Mountain Penguin stuffed animals, stationary with the logo on it, and various souvenirs. At the entrance to that souvenir stand, there was a gacha machine containing that keychain. I don't remember all of the various types, but star sand was packed in plastic drops. The charms were all modelled after fish at the aquarium. It was fairly typical for Gacha Gacha, but at the time it seemed very enticing to me. It was the same for Mari. As we gazed into the, uh, into the machine, Mari was the one who would usually beg our parents at this point, but neither of us had brought a, bought a souvenir and both of us said we wanted the keychains. Since mum couldn't be completely broken, she emphasised that one time only bit. Yay! Mari held up both hands with glee, while I probably just smiled. I remember that inside, I was just as happy. As to which of us went first, it was of course the more assertive Mari. She was always like this, a cheerful and inquisitive child. How cute, Mr. Star. Mari got a starfish charm in a keychain. At this point, Mari still didn't know the difference between a starfish and a star. I was next to get one. It was a pink drop with a jellyfish charm. Ah, uh, a jellyfish. Ah, uh, that's the one I wanted most. Mari pointed the index finger of her tiny hand, exclaiming in a loud voice. Mari was just learning how to use first person when she mentioned herself. Instead of a normal I or me, she said it slowly. Hey, big sister, trade me. No way, I want this one. Uh, naturally, as I had already fallen in love with that design, I obstinately turned it down. Turned her down. Upon begging my mother, my, my ugh. upon begging my mother for one more time, my mother, who had warned us earlier, held her purse strings tight, leaving Mary to sulk. Fine, stupid big sister. Without listening to my mother's astonishments, she ran off. Sulking after being called stupid, I naturally didn't chase her right away. My mother, being optimistic about the aquarium's small size, also waited a while to go look for Mari. And now, all I'm left with are my regrets. If only I had gone after her sooner. If only I traded her keychains in the first place. Even so, the past is unchanging, and I'm left with only my regrets to bear. So in case I would ever, I could ever trade with Mary again, I've stubbornly carried around that keychain, like a treasure, the one with a pink droplet shape and a jellyfish charm. So what if the girl who sh who bumped into us before? What if that is Mary? I rummaged through my bag, seeking to feel the keychain in my hand. Huh? Why at a time like this, I'd forgotten to bring it. The keychain wasn't in the bag nor in my pockets. Huh. A sigh naturally slipped out of my body. After all, I've lost sight of Mari and strayed from Himeno. Himeno has a building map, so there's nothing I can do. Huh? At that moment, a pungent aroma floats by and causes me to speak in surprise. Unable to bear the irritating stench, I pinch my nose. Still, the stench seems to twist in my nose. It's made of the smell of sewage and sulphur and a nauseating stink of vinegar. Yeah. As soon as I try to get away from the smell, something soft creeps along the bottom of my, uh, bottom of my foot. As I hesitantly look down, I realise the true identity of the putrid order. What the... It's... a corpse. I'm not sure what type, but it's as big as my arm spread. The body is slowly decaying and hasn't retained its original form. Yet, by its bulging, round eyes and slightly extended tail fin, I can just barely tell it was a fish. I couldn't tell right away, but it has a silhouette similar to a, to a, a Pira Ruku. I feel like I've seen those eerie glaring eyes, characteristic of a freshwater fish. I feel sick. I move my feet slowly, and a small fragment of the corpse sticks to the bottom of my shoe. Yeah. And she's wearing sandals as well. Ugh. 
on the inner side of which I notice something wriggling desperately. The slight sound of flapping wings departs from beside my ear, and I understand that the wriggling thing is an insect. <laughs> Shaking, chills run up my spine as if someone had pressed ice to it. I take a step back and drop my cell phone. The phone reacts with the backlight at the LCD screen coming on, illuminating the dead body. The syrupy dead body absorbs the light, and the winged insect that flees to avoid it. There's also a meandering white nematode that, that seems not to notice. The backlight soon disappears, leaving a stench amidst the darkness. The shadows of those hideous insects are scorched into my retinas, and they sway like the light of a heat haze in darkness. Something was creeping up from the pit of my so stomach. Uh, endure it! Endure it! I immediately shut my mouth, enduring what had come up. The intermingled acidic taste of the vomit had come up, and the scent of the stomach acid lingering in my nostrils mixed with saliva and caused my eyes to water in pain. Why was it so painful? I can't figure out the answer to my doubts. Not at all. I covered my eyes with both hands. I couldn't have made it if I didn't. But shutting out my vision leaves my sense of smell, causing the smell of rotting water and the stench of the dead body to become more intense, so I uncover my eyes. No. What is this? This is a place for the customers. Is it really alright for this to be here? On top of that, I was in the middle of chasing Mari, wasn't I? No, this isn't the problem. It's strange enough that there's a place like this in the middle of an aquarium. Anyway, I have to get out of here. The stench is so overpowering, it's as if I can see it. I want to get out of here quickly, satisfying myself with the argument that it's a garbage dump or something, and that if I only get away from here, it'll be fine. At any rate, I go back the way I came. Uh, no, that's no good. I might run into Humano. At this moment, I don't want to see her face. My eyes having adjusted to the darkness, I search for a way out. Here the tanks are broken, the little remaining water stinking, and the bodies of living things having tumbled out here and there. I think about how happy I am that I can't see. Even so, to find the exit, I'll have to look around. My nose has become to go numb, and thanks to that I'm somehow able to retain my sanity. Before long I find a dim emergency light behind one of the tanks and head towards it, as if it were the last hope I could cling to. I feel squishing several times beneath my feet, which is a horrible sound, please don't do that. But I try to ignore it and move on. As I move toward the emergency light, it seems the smell is becoming faint. Huh? Just before the door, that's when I get used to the scattered shards of glass and the rotting fish corpses. The tip of my shoe feels as if it has kicked something hard, something different from before. Wondering what I had kicked, I casually look down. No. No. I get the sensation that all the blood has stopped flowing from me, and that my heart has stopped completely. What is it? What is it? The run thing I kicked has patches of hair, two eyes, a nose with a bone to it, and a mouth. Altogether, it is... Altogether it is a human face. What? Oh shit! Okay, I'm creeped out. Speaking accurately, it's a head rather than a face. It's completely lifeless when my foot touches it and it rolls away with a flopping sound. Seeing the state the head is in, I begin to feel ill again, despite having finally calmed down from before. Of the white cranium, only the forehead area seems to be exposed. It seems that this is new. <clears throat> it seems that this is new, and has only just begun to decay. No, for starters, there's no way a human head should be rolling around here. It's my imagination, or it has to be from some model. I haven't yet looked in the direction it was rolling. Convincing myself that it isn't a human head, it really is different. So there was no satisfying myself. I place my hands on the door and attempt to escape. Unable to control my shaking hands, it takes three tries before I can open the door. It's a heavy fire door that is usually open. What's going to be behind this door? 
I don't think it's going to be the exit. In fact, it's almost definitely not the exit. Yeah, that's a... Uh, this is... I step inside with my thoughts racing, and the atmosphere changes completely once more. I can hear the sound of the door closing behind me. Inside is a very clean place. The transparent water is tinted a faint blue, and inside float fantasy-like jellyfish. Countless pillar-shaped tanks are spread around, and the water shimmers as it reflects the light of the fluorescent lamp. Red and yellow, green and purple, the jellyfish's body is diffusing light like a prism. In spite of the strange space I've reached, I'm fascinated by the shimmering live art display. Jimeno, I mutter without thinking. Then I quickly shake my head, erasing the image of Jimeno's face that appears in my mind. Earlier, she didn't come after me. After all, Jimena chose on her own to part ways from me. I'm sure it's because she dislikes me now. It isn't something I should be I should worry about. Even at a quick glance, I can see that there are various types of jellyfish in the tank. Having made efficient use of the small space, it's a charming area. It vividly expresses a starry sky, as is fitting of the name Mantine Aquarium. Compared to the earlier Fish of the World booth, this one isn't the last. Uh, this one isn't the least bit in decay. I wonder if Mari came this way. Um, going back is dangerous. I can't do anything by stopping here. I have to press on. Or I feel worried about Himen all of a sudden. I have to go back. Both of those are true. But I, I feel like I want to press on. I am worried about Himeno, but I want to see what's at the back here. Going back is dangerous. I can't do anything by stopping here. I have to press on. And so I start towards the starry sky. I gaze in fascination to the right and left of me. If circumstances weren't what they are, I would have stopped and stared into each and every tank. The tanks lined up all together are beautiful enough, but each one is vivid like the night sky and light with jewels. Altogether there are seven tanks. Each one holds a different type of jellyfish. Some with poison, some without, characterised by aspects such as where they live. They really are beautiful. I stop and stand at the very centre, between the third and fourth tanks. I wonder if the last time we came, these tanks were here. Nakanobi Mari, my little sister. I lean my back against one of the tanks and sit down. Whenever Mari's face appears in my mind, I lose all of my strength. If anyone saw me, I'd be embarrassed. But here and now in Mountain Aquarium, there's no one around. I heave a sigh and look up at the ceiling. For some reason, a large fan is revolving there. My memories of the last time we visited Mountain Aquarium aren't all bad. It was the first time in a long time all four of us had gone out as a family. Mari and I got along really well, and we always held hands as we walked. We would do things like play house or read picture books aloud. Mari was a bit more of a tomboy than I, so even though I was the older sister, she was the one who gave the orders. Since it was the first time the two of us sisters went to the aquarium, it was natural for us to be very excited. Just as one would expect, the first time Mari and I laid eyes on the creatures of the sea, we experienced fear, awe, and a sense of being deeply moved. The creatures we saw at that time have stayed with me as vivid memories. Happy memories. I still have plenty of them. But on such a special day of all days, Mary and I ended up fighting. The rest proceeded just as I remember. Since then, my parents buy me anything I want. However, I changed as well, and didn't really want anything anymore. Greed itself seemed to decline for me, and I never really got excited for anything anymore. That's why, when my mother bought, this, bought me those boot sandals, I was happy. I was fascinated by their nostalgic ultramarine colour. About one year after Mary disappeared, she stopped coming up in conversation. I don't know if my mother and father had accepted it as a tragic accident, or if the sadness had slowly faded, but my new normal light, but my new normal had begun. I had become an only child, but that is nothing more than an excuse I couldn't escape from. Mary, you're here, right? Finally, it seems my strength has returned, and I stand up. Even though I asked, no answer will come. 
was a thundering ventilation fan in the ceiling is the only sound I can hear. It was almost the same at the same time I stood up. Uh, uh, a crack appears in the glass of the tank behind me. Since the glass doesn't make any noise when it splits, I realise it's broken when the water splashes on my rear end. Water continues to flow out, gradually spreading to my feet. The amount of water from the tank is more than just puddles after a heavy downfall, downpour. Along with the water flowing forth, the jellyfish that had been in the tank until just a moment ago float out. In order to avoid contact with the water already soaking my sandals, I step back from the puddles without looking away. How? Why? As if to play farther with my already bewildered mind, the tank behind me also cracks. Oh shit. The whole place is coming apart. This time I hear the high-pitched noise of glass cracking, following that the tanks are each destroyed in succession of a, in a circle. Being stuck in the middle of the passage, water is closing in on me from all sides, leaving me pressed in between. The edge of the water is steadily drawing near. What should I do? The words that slide from my mouth also flow away with the water. The colour of the tanks had once been so vibrant, now seems, seems eerie to me. Among these jellyfish are poisonous ones. Even worse, some of them are fatal. When thinking that, my legs begin to shake in fear. No. But no matter how frightened I become, I know I can't sit down. As if the area I'm in is shrinking, water and jellyfish are both heading toward me, and it's impossible for me to touch the floor. Oh, what do I do? I have no choice but to run straight through. Or no, I can't think of it. I've, I've just got to run. Run! I have no choice but to run straight through. I no longer have time for doubt. At a glance, the door on the opposite side is clear, closer than the one I had come through. From here the distance to, isn't too far to the interior door. Running at top speed should be good enough to reach that one. I hesitate for a moment. <clears throat> then grit my teeth and take off running. It's no more than 10 metres. It is a distance that should pose no trouble even for someone like me who has tested below average in physical endurance. Yeah. When I had run about 5 metres, just having passed the 6th tank, I, take, I fall full force onto my back. The floor is wet. So one might say this should have been expected. No, what are you doing, Mayu? Get up! No, this is disgusting. The water soaks through my skirt and quickly soaks my underwear. The tank water is in direct contact with the skin on my rear. It is cold and wet, uncomfortable but unavoidable. When I put my hand on the floor to try to stand up, I discover that action is a mistake. Ouch! I squeeze my eyes shut as the pain feels like I've been stabbed by a cold metal needle. No, it doesn't just feel like it. I have been stabbed by something. Have I been stung by? Shaking, I shift my line of sight to my hands. A jellyfish is covering my right hand. At that moment, I get upset that I can't feel the coldness of the water around my right hand. I got stung. What do I do? Someone. The pamphlet introducing the jellyfish has gotten mixed up with the pieces of glass from the tank. Manivore. And oh my god. Is it seriously a man of war? I notice the name without much of a reaction. But it has to be poisonous to be called that. There have also been incidences of fatalities. Yes. Fatalities. Poison. What do I do if I've been stung? Do I clean it? Is it bad if I don't clean it? I can feel my pulse quickening. I wonder if that's a poison making its way through me. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? When I try to will myself to calm down, my impatience ramps up. Someone. Someone help me. Trying to use my pulsating right hand for support to push myself up, I slide in the puddle and can't stand. It hurts. It really hurts. I put water on the area where I'd been stung in an attempt to rinse it out. However, the opening of the wound stings and startles me. I need fresh water. Trying to apply pressure to the vein, I tightly grip the area where I've been stung. Dad. Mom. Jimeno. Mari. Wanting to be saved, I call out as loudly as I can. However, in reality, my voice has already grown hoarse. The 
the corners of my eyes grow hot, and from them fall individual droplets. No, I... I'm going to die. My voice is no longer really a voice at all. Uh. Before long, an electric shock runs through my right hand. The subsiding of the intense pain brings my senses back to me. But my voice will no longer come out. Even when I try to think of something, nothing happens except a sensation of pain whirling inside me that fills me to the brim. Unable to control my body, I fall to the ground. First my head, then my chest, from my stomach to my feet. Having fallen on my face, half of my body is submerged in water. My heartbeat quickens. I become acutely aware of the flow of my blood. Unable to stand it, I vomit. The very idea of being unable to endure it no longer occurs to me. The very idea of being able to endure it. Even so, the poison won't be expelled from my body. My entire, become, my entire being becoming numb is proof that my blood has been pumping so quickly it has worn down my veins. <sighs> Wanting to rinse out the remaining vomit in my mouth, I suck in water. It tastes like salt. Within my body, I'm struggling with all I have. On the outside, my shell has long exceeded the limits of its stamina. Blood is soaking through the capillaries in my eyeballs, and the puddles spreading on the floor are pierced with red. Gradually, I stop feeling my blood flow. Is it because my heart has stopped? Or because my consciousness has disappeared? Either way, my consciousness stops and fades into darkness. With the same simplicity that a ventilation fan spews out old air, my breath has evacuated from my body. Wow. When I come to, I'm still gazing out into the cylindrical tank. Vacantly, Thinking nothing more than, I wonder if something's in there, I just stare into the tank. I have neither the urge to call out, nor the desire to walk away. Merely the sensation that my consciousness alone is floating along the rippling sea. Why on earth am I here anyway? What have I come here to do? Whether I can't remember, or there was just no reason from the beginning? The jellyfish are pretty. Especially this jellyfish. Its colour is so bright. The voice that starts talking right in front of me catches my attention for some reason. I feel like I've heard it before somewhere. Because that's Jimeno! Am I alive? Well, who is it? I'm unable to remember. A wavering face that won't come into focus. Anyway, Mayu, where did she go? Mayu? That girl. She talked like she was looking for someone. Poor thing. If she's lost someone here, she probably won't find them. Hmm. Wait a second. Where is this to begin with? Swaying, swaying, softly, softly. Drip, drop. The sounds of drops resonating all around me. Gradually ceasing to care, my consciousness melts into the water. My form. <clears throat> well, crap. Maybe I shouldn't have gone, like, stayed here. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, Sound of the Drop Fall into Poison. Well, the demo, anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. I had a lot of fun doing this little experiment, and I'll try to keep uh, doing it until I find a way to make it work. Uh, but if you are interested in seeing the rest of the demo, then there should be a link in the description below. And the full game releases on September 30th, so be sure to keep an eye out for that um, if visual novels are your thing. And if they are, then click the video on screen now to check out another visual novel we played on the channel, uh, featuring myself and Sanrio from the TKMR podcast. Until next time! You gotta do How many the times mother. do I have to tell you not to do it?